In the last couple of years, we've all become very aware of at least one great tenor voice. There's no disputing the wonderful quality of that sound. But Pavarotti is not going to sing for us again during this series. It's always seemed to me that a great tenor voice is a bit like an athlete poised for a record-breaking attempt. Great tenors live dangerously, yet like great athletes, they succeed. Each of these programmes will feature just one great voice. All the singers have some special extra that lifts them out of the commonplace, and they all have stories worth telling. Today's tenor sings with the whole range of human emotions. It's a glorious voice, but more than that, it really speaks to you. That's why I've called this first program Singing from the Heart. Are you thinking to yourself, I know that and can't place it? Well, it is the song we normally call Love's Last Word is Spoken, but on that particular record label it appears as Parlami d'Amore Mariu, and the singer is the Sicilian Giuseppe Di Stefano. Although his name's linked in the minds of many opera-goers with that most prima of all donors, Maria Callas, 
he did have a most distinguished career in his own right. He was born near Catania in Sicily in 1921. His father was a regular policeman in the Carabinieri, and when young Pippo was only six years old, his parents moved to Milan. Unlike, um, say, Richard Tauber, Giuseppe had very few dreams of a musical career, but it was soon evident he'd been blessed with a voice of quite exceptional quality. And when it became clear he really should be trained, where better to live than Milan, home of the great La Scala Opera House? But hardly had he begun to study seriously than he was called up for military service. And of course, in 1939, joining the Italian army meant that from our point of view, he was on the wrong side. Italians being Italians, however, even a war could not stop him singing. And in 1943, his commanding officer allowed him to make some public appearances under the assumed name of Nino Florio. Let's hear now the sort of song he probably sang on those occasions. Regrettably, we can't trace any recordings by this Nino Florio, so here, recorded considerably later, in uh, 1964 to be exact, is Giuseppe Di Stefano singing Come Back to Sorrento. What lady could resist Giuseppe Di Stefano's invitation to come back to Sorrento? But 1943 was not a particularly good year to be an Italian soldier in Milan. In September, Italy capitulated to the American and British forces, but that left many Italians caught behind the German lines in their own country. Di Stefano managed to escape on foot to Switzerland as a refugee, where in 1944 his career really began in the lakeside town of Lausanne. I happened myself to be living in Lausanne when another great singer, Jose Carreras, made an early appearance there. And he said that Di Stefano's romantic sound has always been an inspiration to him. In Lausanne, Di Stefano was heard singing in the refugee camp. And a wealthy Russian lady who was seeing the war out in Switzerland paid for his first recordings to be made in the town's radio studios. Certainly on the evidence of some records which Di Stefano made just a few years later in 1947, he possessed then perhaps the most beautiful tenor voice of the 20th century. It's not surprising that in a matter of only two or three years, he'd taken by storm not only La Scala Milan and the Rome Opera, but also the Metropolitan in New York.
That was Giuseppe Di Stefano's 1947 recording of Cavaradossi's aria When the Stars Were Shining from Act Three of Puccini's opera Tosca. He sits waiting for execution in a closely guarded prison, writing a letter to his beloved Tosca. They were two roles which were to be played all round the world by Di Stefano and Maria Callas. And for my money, their complete recording of Tosca, made in the early 50s, is the best complete opera recording ever made, perfect on every count. Let's hear just a few moments of them together from that recording, later in Act Three. Tosca has told Cavradossi how she has killed the villainous chief of police, Baron Scarpia, while he was trying to have his wicked way with her. Cavradossi says, How could those sweet hands do such a deed, O oh, Dolce Mani? Listen particularly to the way Di Stefano shades and controls his voice, even as his passionate outburst proceeds. It's singing of the very highest order. Then you'll hear Tosca explaining how he must go through a mock execution by firing squad. He must pretend to be shot, then they can both be free. Those of you familiar with the opera will know how soon these hopes will be dashed.
liberi, liberi, via del mar. Che se tu We have to leave Cavaradossi and Tosca there, happily planning his escape from what she believes is a mock execution. Well, that was Di Stefano and Callas at their very best, and so far I've spoken in glowing terms throughout. But by the late 50s, Pippo had been overusing his voice, and some would say enjoying the good things of life just a little more than is good for a singer. A well-known recording producer, John Culshaw, in his delightfully titled book, Putting the Record Straight, says, at the mere mention of Di Stefano's name, stage and recording producers have been known to turn white and run as fast as possible in the opposite direction. Rehearsals bored him. He liked fine food and fast cars and was a compulsive gambler. Yet when I first met him, I took to him at once. That was the point. Even though Pippo's voice rapidly showed signs of wear and tear, he could charm the birds from the trees. He had a period of singing heavier roles, not always entirely happily. He made, for example, a dreadful disc of Ness and Dorma from Puccini's opera Turandot in 1955. Certainly none would be inclined to sleep through his attempts at the final top notes. Yet through it all, his voice was still able to involve the listener in a way few other tenors can do. You feel as if he's singing just for you. He even tackled some of the parts which in earlier years were the exclusive province of Richard Tauber. By way of illustration, let me play you the German version of You Are My Heart's Delight from a recording made with the Vienna Volksoper. Franz Lehar's music for the Land of Smiles is far from easy, and we can't help noticing that the wonderful control of Di Stefano's earlier years has gone. He breathes in some very funny places. Nonetheless, it's a most exciting performance.
We've heard how the voice of Giuseppe Di Stefano could be an instrument of great drama and great beauty. At its best, between about 1947 and 54, it was probably the most sumptuous tenor sound any of us can recall. And over and above the sound was a special extra quality which has never left him. What I call singing from the heart. It's a well-kept secret that when he recorded a series of television programmes, the ladies of the orchestra and even a few of the men could be observed wiping a tear from the corner of the eye after each song. I can tell you there are very few singers who can do that to hardened professional musicians. The sad fact was, though, that Di Stefano became unreliable. Sometimes he sang wonderfully, sometimes not. On occasions he failed to appear. And yet in 1973, when he joined Maria Callas on her ill-advised final tour, the public responded to him with great warmth and he gave them occasional flashes of sheer magic. He now lives in retirement near Milan. Recently in London I had the great good fortune to hear him singing for charity. Although he had some difficulty completing the programme, the great spaces of the Barbican Hall were frequently filled with that magical sound, and we all felt he'd sung specially for us. And now, before we take our leave of him to the strains of one of those wonderfully melodious Italian songs which he sang on that occasion, let me thank you for joining me and hope that you'll be with me, Robin Gregory, for the next programme which will feature someone I call the Invisible Tenor. And now, Giuseppe Di Stefano will sing us out with Catari, Catari, Core Ungrato, Ungrateful Heart. In it we hear all that's most remarkable in his singing, He's so involved that we feel his heart really is breaking. And that's his secret, surely. While he sings, the emotion and the song become one. Sto a soffrire, sto a soffrire, non se può credere. 